Hello there, my name is Brennan, and I'm one of the developers of Mouse Shapes over at Scarecrow Arts. Today I'm going to give you a quick video run through of how to use a script, uh, whether it be for character animation, lip syncing, or motion graphics, and how you can adapt it to fit into your After Effects workflow. Because that's what we made the script for, and that's why it's free, because we just want to make After Effects a better user experience for animators like us. So to get started, you're going to want to go over to our website and download Mouse Shapes from the Mouse Shapes tab. Uh, enter your email, and we'll send you uh, any updates that come out, like a huge update. Uh, or you can give us a fake email, doesn't really matter. Once you download it, make sure to drop all the contents in your zip file to the script UI folder located wherever you uh, installed After Effects. And when you've done that, you can open up After Effects and open up your script UI mouse shapes. And now it opens up a small dockable window, so you can put it anywhere in your workspace. I like to leave it here. There's not a whole bunch of buttons on it, so I don't feel too bad about it taking up this space, and I don't keep it up for very long, because once I use it, it's done, and then I move on and I animate. But since there is such a few amount of buttons, you should know what they all do. Uh, and to get through it, the first thing is the text field composition name. So over here, you can type in whatever you want. Uh, if you have multiple characters in the scene, you might want to say, like, Jeff's mouth, or, uh, well, something to denote what you're doing. That's up to you. If you leave it blank, like I'm going to do in this tutorial, it'll just default to mouth shapes. You can also pick the label color uh, to make your project window over here more organized, and anything that incorporates the use of the mouse shape script will be put together with that label. Uh, I just find these two to really help with organization, which is why it's in uh, the mouse shape script. Uh, you'll, you'll probably tell that a lot of what my initial workflow when doing lip syncing is uh, bleeds into the script. So if you do it a little bit differently, it might be a small adjustment, but it's nothing too huge, because when it comes down to it, the entire script uh, brings up a few buttons, and you can toggle multiple layers. So now I have this little guy on screen. He's made out of shape layers, and I made a couple mouths for him, and I named the layers the different phonemes to help me out when I'm lip syncing. Now I'm just going to select everything I want to put into my mouse shapes composition, and hit new comp, and wait for it to create. And a new uh, UI panel will pop up, which takes on the name of each of the layers and gives them their own button. Uh, so if you guessed, you would guess right that if you click on each of these buttons, it would change to that layer uh, that has the following name. And that's pretty much it when it comes to lip syncing. Yeah, you're basically set. And now all you have to do is uh, drop in an audio track and uh, just uh, sync it up with whatever you're doing. Uh, start doing some mouth shapes. Start listening it's to the track. It's just that simple start adding in shapes uh, whenever you feel they're necessary to do a lip sync. So we're not taking all the work out of lip syncing, but we're taking all the setup and making it super organized, uh, and the mouths are completely editable. So if I go over here, I can actually go inside this pre-comp, and you're not going to want to touch any of the timing here, because uh, the script's timing in this composition is very important to it working properly. Uh, you might see some funky stuff going on up here, like a shape all the way over here. Just don't bother moving them, they're all fine, they're all going to work just perfectly the way you had them organized when you started. But let's say, for example, I want to change this Oz shape. Uh, so over here in the L shape, I have a little line on the tongue, and I want to keep that consistent, so I thought I'd go back and edit this. And you can! Uh, you just have to double-click and go back to the shape layer, and then let's add in that little line. Let's take out that stroke. I mean, not the stroke, the fill. And let's do a little butt capping. And there, now I have a little line. I think that's a lot better. And if I go back to my initial comp, and uh, I decide to trigger the ah shape, it'll update. So one of the features of mouse shapes is uh, it crops vectors, so shape layers and uh, SVG files, AI files from Illustrator, they'll all automatically crop to the tallest mouse shape and the widest mouse shape. And it'll find a nice max and min and it'll put them all right inside of it. That way, you can also just move the anchor point, and if you want to animate stuff like the rotation or the position, it'll all update for all the shapes. And you can also do the same with scaling. And it'll all just scale from that center, and it'll apply even though you change the shape, so you can animate those features as well. Now, you'll also notice that when I scaled it, uh, the vector didn't actually lose any quality. So, uh, when you run the script, automatically a certain layer property is toggled uh, with the mouse shapes layers. So that way, vectors can scale infinitely even though they're pre-comped. They'll have these nice sharp lines going on. Which is what you want from vectors. I mean, that's kind of their deal. 
Now, if you ever lose this script panel, it just disappears, it falls off your window, or you accidentally close it, that's fine. You can just click on the pre-comp that you created and hit the control panel button, and it'll open that right up for you. And you can do as many as you want. Uh, I don't recommend it, because you don't need that many. But you can have as many control panels as you want for different mouse shapes. Uh, so if you have multiple characters in a scene, you could have multiple control panels up to uh, toggle their mouths, their eyes, or their face, whatever you want. Uh, and it all works without any problem. I don't know what else to say about that. It works pretty damn well. So there's a character in a game that we're working on here at Scarecrow Arts, and uh, we like to animate his head and his torso to fit his reaction in the game. And we want to animate him in here uh, for cutscenes. And if we want to do that and then reflect the data later in the game, all we have to do is open up the control panel for these two compositions I've created here, which are actually mouse shapes compositions. So we open up the head and the torso, and now I could change the head at will and the torso. So we can animate different parts of the body and just toggle them. Because that's what all mouse shapes is. It's not really a lip syncing script so much as a toggler, but we find the most use in it uh, when lip syncing. Because it just makes that entire experience uh, much easier, quicker, it takes out the setup, and it makes it more enjoyable. Even though that's probably the most boring part of any animation process. So that's basically it for uh, mouse shapes. If you have any suggestions, recommendations, comments, or questions, feel free to email me or fill out a form on the Scarecrow Arts website, or you could hit us up on Twitter. Uh, I hope that we've made a script that you can use in your everyday to make working in After Effects a better experience and lip syncing made easy.